Carpe Diem, my name is Ultranatic, and welcome back to Total Drama Vlog. Man, it is so good to be doing all this again. So, uh, yeah, uh, after the most recent uh, first season we had of the Total Drama reboot, Total Drama Island 2023, we now have Total Drama Island 2024. A little misleading since uh, several of the episodes came out in 2023, but... They are properly airing in North America in 2024, so you know what? I'll work with this. Uh, that all being said, uh, full disclosure, I have in fact seen every episode already because a lot of them leaked early through one means or another. In fact, there was a controversy where uh, uh, a couple of the episodes leaked the thumbnails early on in the UK and gave a couple things away about at least who made it as far as they did. They didn't really give away who was winning outright, but either way, it's kind of infuriating to get any sort of spoilers whatsoever, so, uh, yeah, to anybody who got caught up in that, I'm so sorry you had to go through that, uh, I'm, and for the sake of that, uh, even though I know what's going on, I'm sure most of y'all already know the outcome of the season, I'm just gonna be doing the vlogs as I normally do, uh, as if I was just seeing them for the first time with no prior knowledge of anything that does happen. For the most part, I might give a teensy bit of a bookmark alert here or there if it applies. But like in, in general, it's all going to be as if I'm watching it just uh, for my first time ever. So, with that out of the way, let's start with the first episode of Total Drama Island 2024, The Pink Painter Strikes Again. Not gonna act like that's a great tale in my opinion. I think that's supposed to be... Uh, a nod to the Pink Panther movies or something. I don't know. It just feels like kind of a stretch for a pun. Sorry, I thought I heard a train whistle or... No, not a train whistle. There's somebody playing music downstairs. Whatever. Uh, just gonna keep going. Just if you don't, if you can't hear that, no problem. If you can, just ignore it. So, uh, we open the season up first with all the contestants on this giant chopper, which I absolutely adore that opening when you see it in survivor seasons uh like you did with like uh australian outback or uh redemption island or especially with uh heroes versus villains now granted those are like more individual than like a giant chopper like this is going on but still there's that uh and it also gives us a quick less than two minute recap of the entire first season and I think they do it pretty well. Like, not every plot point necessarily, but a lot of the really big ones. And at least giving you a good rundown of every contestant beforehand. Uh, I mean, like, seeing that was kind of like watching the Nostalgia Critic and his friends uh, give a quick recap of the entire uh, Avatar Last Airbender se uh, series when he went over it for his review of M. Night Shyamalan's The Last Airbender. By the way, don't ask me my opinion on the new Netflix series. I haven't seen it may or may not at some point in the future. I, I, I don't know. This feels like one of those things where I should probably just stick to the original. But getting sidetracked. So, uh, after we get that recap, we see the contestants dropped from the chopper, which I am not giving a casualty count for because it looks like they're at a low enough drop to where they probably survive. Heck, it's even shown later on that Chris and Chef actually bet on this. And I'm like, I knew, it. I knew you were keeping track of the same thing. Yeah, there's definitely somebody mowing outside. Again, please try to ignore that. So, uh, yeah, the contestants uh, drop from the chopper. They get back on the dock. Uh, for a couple of them, you might be wondering why the heck they're back if their experience was, like, really bad or something. Or, in Priya's case, she won. What does she have to prove left? Well, for one thing, I mean, you, it'd be kind of awesome if she became the first two-time winner. Like, I, I'd be completely on board for that. Uh, but, no, that's not why she's back. No, the reason she does come back is incredibly dumb not for her sake though like she's fine it's because her parents <laughs> she wins a million dollars and what they do they tell her to put it away until she's 40 can i just make a ruling here and say that priya's parents are among some of the worst in all of animation we don't even get lines out of them but everything you hear about them like supports the idea y'all suck as parents, maybe you're loving, maybe you're caring, but these are some of the dumbest freaking choices. This is like Mr. and Mrs. Turner from the Fairly Odd Parents bad. It's amazing. Like, thank God we don't have to actually deal with them, like, in person as characters, because I'm positive I would freaking hate them. But, uh, yeah, for that sake, she is here. She'd rather be going through this than an old summer job working at uh, a hot dog stand, it looks like. So, there's that. 
uh, we see Emma has broken up with Chase again, and it's because she watched back the footage and realized, oh, Chase didn't really want to get back with me because he liked me. He was, or he didn't save me during that immunity challenge uh, because he uh, was trying to get a better chance in the game or because he cared about me. It's just because he wanted the pizza, yada, yada, yada. And I'm like, better, better late than never, I guess? I don't know. Uh, Chase delusionally still does not get the picture. Yeah, I'm just going to say, he's still the my least favorite character from the the entire bunch. There's people I hate more than him in the entire series, but God, he just never changes. Uh, as Bowie passes by after Emma blows him off, Chase goes like, that chick's am I right? To which Bowie retorts, you're never right. Again, the writing, stellar. <gasps> At least when it comes to the contestants that are actually physically in front of us. Again, the parents of Priya. Terrible, but uh, th that was a great line. That being said, as much as Chase is very obviously in the wrong, we then get a scene of Emma doing something that I think was pretty freaking cold. Uh, when Nichelle just tries giving a nice greeting, and Emma just walks right past her. She's like, oh, Nichelle's probably gonna be like one of the first boots anyways. Like, there's no point making friends with her. Doesn't mean you shouldn't try. What if something like comes up and you need the numbers? Think this through. Like, <laughs> Whatever. Uh, we see Scary Girl has a new design, which, given how much I love Scary Girl, this would be one of those times where I'd be like, why would you do that? Why would you mess with perfection? But, uh, I'm not gonna lie, uh, while that was perfection, perfection can come in many shapes and forms. And this is a completely alternate version of that perfection. I don't know if that makes any sense, but that does me because I'm not gonna lie. I love this too. Like by she gets rid of most of the goth cab and instead dresses more like a camp counselor. She still got a very palish face, but just not obviously white makeup. Her hair is still got like this magenta like tone to it, and she still has like the unblinking eyes and the giant smile. And I'm like, like, what is all this about? And she says that because she was deemed as too scary, like that, and, that, and that's why people tell her she was voted out not really true it's because you screw the challenge for your team but maybe that was part of it she's gonna try and make an active effort to be more normal this season which uh, normally i'd be against because again why well, perfect perfection except it works beautifully here because her acting normal is actually even scarier than what was happening before because of course it is it's like, what's scarier? Somebody who you know, like, face in front of you is like a demonic freaking being? Or someone who might be a demonic freaking being, but just hides it a little bit? Actually, she's terrible at hiding it, but that's, that's part of what makes it so much fun. So, uh, yeah, completely for this. Uh, Priya tries ch uh, training Millie up on the game, given, you know, she wasn't all that great in the first season with that stuff. And Millie didn't even read the packet, to which I somewhat understand. Because that packet gave me flashbacks to the lists that Courtney consistently made in the show. And I'm like, yeah, don't don't touch that stuff. Like, it just kind of led to bad things when it came to Courtney. Don't do it with Priya. Uh, that, that, Priya's a better character than Courtney, I, I'd say, in general. But all the same, like, it, it, gave, me, it gave me that kind of impression. And I'm like, don't do it. Uh, we see Axel shove Ripper, despite saying it's cheesy, like, yeah, try and be nicer this time around. But yeah, it's Ripper, so I, like, yeah, it's pretty funny seeing that. And we see that Rajbo are still together, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Like, change whatever you want about Scary Girl. Do not mess with that. Like, I might find Scary Girl more perfect, but god dang it, I love seeing Rajbo together like this. That all being said, uh... Bowie gets pretty a pretty rough reception for what he did to Priya and Millie in the finale of the last season. To which I'm like, compared to Julia, I don't think he was quite that bad. In fact, he was going home if he didn't try something like that, if you ask me. But, uh, yeah, uh, while, while I initially would defend him on that front, he then gives <clears throat> an uh, apology to... Uh, which is legitimately one of the worst apologies I've ever seen in my life, next to, like, Jason Derulo from the song What You Say. It's just, like, he doesn't actually say I'm sorry. It's more like, actually, I was right to do what I did. I taught you all a lesson, so you should be thanking me for what I did. Even Raj 
who is supportive of him and says, like, you got this, just say you're sorry. Even he's like, oh, you believe that, brother. <laughs> okay, he didn't say that. It's all just saying in his face. It's just one of those things where it's like, it's like, I, I, I just can't help but find it really funny how much Bowie completely misses the point about what he did wrong. I mean, well, wrong. Again, I don't think it was that bad, but just placate them a little bit. And now I got a dog barking. Is every noise going to happen in the middle of this vlog? <laughs> Whatever. Still going because I want to just give you the thoughts. And I'm going to guess you can tell what I'm saying anyways. Uh, so uh, Chris then comes out and says that in this season, everyone's going to be having a clean slate. Instantly I call bullshit because that's not how returning seasons work. What, you give them like... Like the neuralizers from like Men in Black and say and make it to where people just don't remember the air because how they played. And then he says, So the team are gonna be put today by captains, including the big champion of them all, Priya. And I'm like, okay, that was a good fake out. That was pretty smart. That was pretty smart. That was pretty funny. And uh, quite vainly, Bowie is the other team captain because they were the final two. You know what? I, I support that decision. Uh, and they pick their teams uh, in this order. We see Priya pick Millie. Makes sense. Best friends. We see Bowie pick Raj. Boyfriends. That's again, makes perfect sense. We then get Priya picking Emma because perfect alliance member, which I'm like, really? You weren't even really aligned in the last season. I have no idea what she's talking about. And if anything, if I had been in Priya's shoes, I would have picked Wayne. Because you'd be breaking up Wayne and Raj. I don't know, that just strikes me as a smart decision, but whatever. Uh, naturally, Raj then insists that Bowie pick Wayne, which he does, and that's what I would have done too. Like, keep that tight duo together. Like, Raj is already on your side. If Wayne's there, he'll be on Raj's side, and by default, on your side too. It just makes sense here. And then it's mostly, uh, and then it's uh, Caleb who gets picked, who is initially a little annoyed. What, I'm not getting picked first? I'm like, Caleb. They're picking friends. And yes, you're a great, strong force. They're going to keep their friends, their allies. You will stick with them either way in the game first. But yeah, he then gets picked by uh, Priya's team. And he's like, I don't know, fifth pick us not very good. You were picked fifth out of 14 prospective contestants. That's perfectly fine. I'd say it's actually really good, all things considered. Like, you were the first boot and you were picked fifth for a team. I think you're fine. You're really overthinking this. Then it's mostly a rapid fire uh, game here as far as like who gets picked when. Uh, you see Julia get picked by Bowie and you know he does it because he needs somebody who might be a target ahead of him in his tribe. Team, tri tribe. I, I think yeah, either of them work in this case. Uh, and then it's Priya picking Damien. Bowie picking Chase. Priya picking Axel. Bowie picking MK. Priya picking Z, and we're left with the final three contestants. Uh, we got Scary Girl, who then gets picked by Bowie, thinking that she's a new girl. Okay, I'm sorry, is this like a Clark Kent glasses thing? Because Bowie didn't recognize her. Neither did Wayne and Raj initially, which initially I just wrote off as Wayne and Raj being stupid. Like, again, the funny, relatable kind of stupid, but still stupid. Bowie doesn't recognize her now? Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you put their silhouettes side by side, they're very obviously the same person. But yeah, after Scary Girl gets picked, she's like, you won't regret this. Hmm, already did. Yeah, or a cha-ching, I should say, because a bookmark a whore for that. Uh, and finally, Priya has to pick between Nichelle and Ripper. And she picks Nichelle because whatever you thought of her in the last season, at least she didn't use Priya as a human shield, which is her main takeaway. You know what? That's a perfectly fine takeaway. I will work with, I would work with that too. The teams get their names with Priya's team being Team Ratface. <laughs> I love it. And then Bowie initially making fun of that, but his team is named Team Skunkbutt. Ooh, that's an even worse name. That makes that even funnier. Love it. Uh, after MK gets picked to be on the same team as Julia, we see them instantly bond, showing respect for each other's villainous plays, which is, I'm not gonna lie, a little odd. Like, you left on pretty bad terms last time. Like, where'd this come from? What? Now, granted, I would have been a little more believing of this had we known that they made like, like, like they made up at some point by the end of the last season or something. But I'm, it kind of looks like this is the first time they're even talking. So, 
Not entirely sure how they made up quite like that. My hair's in the way right here. But, uh, I'll work with this, assuming that at least any kind of good results, uh, and we will see where that goes from here. Uh, we see Michelle say that after her last season, how she humiliated herself, Hollywood, quote, canceled her. Last I checked, that's not what canceled meant anymore in the society. She didn't do anything like say a slur or something like that on the show. Okay, well, I'm guessing what she meant was that her contract got canceled. Which makes even less sense. Okay, not le even less sense, but still, no, not really any more sense, I should say. Because y'all already know she's not an action star. Most of the world should know that. The fact that they didn't believe because they're stupid teens is not her fault. Although, granted, I just realized, how old is Michelle exactly? Is she 16? Like, a 16-year-old action star? I mean, I'm not saying it's not unbelievable. I mean, Jennifer Lawrence played a teenage action star in uh, Katniss Everdeen. I think she was a little bit older. I don't know for sure, but probably was. So, maybe you could get away with stuff like that. But even I'm like, because a couple of idiot teens didn't know it, and she looked a little stupid... <laughs> I, I don't know. That doesn't really make any sense to me. But because of that, she decided to train her ass off to get here. Basically the opposite of what Millie had been doing. And we'll see where that goes as well. We see Caleb, due to not wanting to be the first person to vote out again, he's trying to not be Ezekiel, uh, tries to make an instant bond with Priya. She initially looks a little, she looks a little bit flatter, but then Millie pu pulls her away so they can talk more strategy. It's going to take a little bit of time for Caleb to get to that. Uh, the challenge that they're all put through is called Grandma's Footsteps, which anybody with eyes will instantly recognize as a parody of that challenge from Squid Game, which is mirroring the classic children's game of Mother May I. It's just, uh, you, or not Mother May I necessarily, but close enough. Uh, in this case, it's, uh, an older grandmother, uh, chef's grandmother, actually, uh, having her back turned, and you haven't having, having to run to where she is by a finish line. But when she turns around, if she sees anybody move, she gets to pelt them with a paintball. Or a paint balloon, I, I should say. Uh, initially, a Ripper thinks that she looks a little bit familiar. Probably does, I have no idea. Uh, so we see Millie run surprisingly quickly to get there. Maybe that she didn't need to do the train. Maybe she just sort of got the adrenaline going. But she gets instantly knocked out, followed by Priya. And it's then that the light bulb goes off for Ripper being like, Oh my god, that's Grandma Axe Hatchet. To which you're only, you're only really missing the, lat, the, the mill of those names there. Because otherwise, Grandma Hatchet. I feel like if you knew those names alone, it wouldn't have taken you that long to figure it out. But it is Ripper. Again, kind of stupid. I love how, like, over half the guys in this new iteration are just complete idiots, but kind of in different ways. Jason's an idiot. Ripper's an idiot. Wayne and Roger idiots. Z's kind of an idiot, too. I mean, Damien, Bowie, and Caleb are the only people who have any fucking brains on this show. So, or, uh, uh, but amongst the guys, at least. Uh, although, honestly, I'm not sure any of the girls are that stupid. Even Emma, who makes a lot of stupid choices, is not stupid, stupid, if you will. The guys, though, most of them complete idiots. I just now noticed that, and I'm like, you think I'd be a little annoyed that so many of the guys in this show have a uh, have their comedy style kind of built around the same uh, outcome? But because they're all very, they have a lot of variation in what kind of stupid they are. I'm more accepting of it. Plus, they're not. They do have a few moments of using brains, usually. So, yeah, I'm a little more forgiving of that. Uh, anyway, we then see an intern get fired because the balloons are filled with pink paint. Hence the title of the show, The Pink Painter Strikes Again. Also, I will be fair, as much as I thought that the title was a little bit uh, not very well thought out. Pink Painter, that's already pretty good given what people are being pelted with. And then Strikes Again, given she's apparently supposed to be like a great baseball pitcher. That does kind of work, too. So maybe I should rethink what I really think of this title. Uh, like, maybe I was just nitpicking with that earlier. So, uh, yeah, the intern gets fired. And uh, because it was pink paint instead of red paint, as Chris wanted, to which I say, oh, yeah, red paint would look like blood. You have sensors. I think they would have wanted that. But anyway, MK takes note that 
an intern has now been fired, and there's just going to be a free friggin' intern costume somewhere around the lot. Uh, several other cousins then get taken out, including Z. Uh, we got MK grabbing on the back of Caleb's back. I like the hack she was making there. Axel and Ripper bicker a little bit. Axel trips him. Ripper's out. Uh, uh, we then see Caleb, or not Caleb, uh, we see Chase try to go for uh, the finish line in, uh, initially. And it looks like he might actually do it because he's like dodging a lot of uh, Grandma Axe Hatchet's paint balls or paint balloons. But then uh, in a great callback to the first and kind of third season, uh, we see the balloon boomerang around. Again, that's not the least bit how those work, but cartoon logic. I, 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 I think it's pretty funny. Uh, we then see Damien get taken out due to a murder hornet. Uh, and then we get, uh, Grandma Atchet pull basically a Tasmanian devil and begin, like, spinning around like a tornado and take out a lot of people. Uh, Caleb and, Caleb and MK then get taken out next. Emma looks like she might actually make it to the end, but Julia, knowing that she might not actually be a target, thanks to a tip she got from MK, uh, tackles Emma, sacrificing herself, but preventing the rap faces from actually gaining an initial win. By the way, I'm really happy that I instantly already had these team names down like this. Uh, and that just leaves Bowie and Michelle. And initially everyone's like, oh, well, Bowie wins instantly because Michelle can't do anything. Well, for a girl who can't do anything, she's lasted pretty long in the competition so far. So, I don't know, give her a little bit more credit than that, Ripper. Uh, but yeah, Michelle then goes full action star, leaps over Bowie and gets the win for the rap phases, and even I'm like, that is some class freaking action stunt work right there. You don't need Jerry anymore, Nichelle. So because of that, the uh, skunk butts have to go to tribal. Uh, and initially, it looks like Bowie might be a target just because of the animosity and because Julia did a, did a good job of getting herself out of the uh, firing line, if you will. But then out of complete nowhere, Scary Girl comes up to give herself a plea for how to stay that actually kind of cements her going home because she reveals that she's been studying these contestants by looking through their windows and even their closets. Again, don't change a thing about this character. It's like, okay, you did. But did you? You didn't really change her. She's exquisite. And she goes home. I'm going to take a gander and say you never asleep. So, uh, yeah, Scary Girl goes home, and uh, she even says in her confessional, this isn't the last you've seen of Scary Girl. Cha-ching. Okay, I guess spoilers. You do see the contestants uh, come back for the finale, if I remember correctly. But ignoring that, there is another way Scary Girl kind of comes back into the show. Not to compete, but... If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So yeah, that was the first episode of Total Drama Island 2024. Overall, very good episode. It's like not much I can really complain about aside from a few kind of individual character moments. But because everyone gets a little bit of time in the spotlight, with maybe a few exceptions, but like at least three quarters of them do. Uh, there's not any one person who like ruins the show or the episode or the plot or anything. I, and even then, the ones who are kind of bad... A lot of them have their good funny moments too, whether it be from them actually being a good, entertaining, dynamic character or from getting comeuppance like you have with Ripper or Chase. So, uh, yeah, the pink pair strikes again. Like the episode quite a bit. I cannot wait to keep doing these for you. And uh, I just realized from doing these Total Drama Vlogs, these all do count for my video listing, which means like if I count those in, I am actually a lot freaking closer to making it to 200 videos by the end of this season of Total Drama Island 2024, which means, along with a lot of our videos I still have planned to make, uh, at some point, maybe by this year or next year, my 200th video of ranking every song to rank at number 99 on a Billboard year-end list should be, should be in the works. And man, am I going to be excited to see that too. So, uh, yeah, that makes me all the more ex uh, excited to be looking over these episodes again. Loving this season so far. I cannot wait to keep going with this. So, uh, everybody else, I hope you have a good day and take care.